there's something that smells so good in the fall and winter time and that is chili cooking in your pressure cooker or in your instant pot today we're going to use the instant pot for this recipe my name is sierra and i'm a masters of integrative nutrition student and i'm really looking forward to showing you some of these whole food recipes this one in particular takes some time so I like to start and prep it earlier in the day so that way it can be in my pressure cooker nice and warming for when everybody is ready to eat because our fall season is full of activities and dance class and youth groups so some nights we're on the go and this is a really great one to just kind of set it and forget it once you get it all prepped and ready to go. I'm going to show you a few different techniques in this one recipe and hopefully you can use them later as well. I did prep a few things beforehand, like cutting some of my vegetables, and I even pre-cooked the beans that we're gonna be using in my Instant Pots. Now you could set it for 25 minutes if you want your beans completely done and you know that you're gonna eat this meal immediately. Let's get to it. I wanna show you a few ways to cut these vegetables before I get them in the oven. Now, as you can see, this tray is so pretty. It's got lots of colors on there. We've got tomatoes, onions, shallots, and bell peppers and garlic. Now we're roasting these vegetables and there's two reasons why we're doing that. One is it enhances the flavor. <laughs> so you get such a robust flavor for your chili and it does make it a little bit sweeter. The other thing is when you roast some vegetables, it actually increases the amino acid content in your vegetables and that's so good for your muscles. It also increases the antioxidant content. So it being fall and winter time, flu season, cold season, it's good to get all of those nutrients um, as much as we possibly can. I wanna show you how I cut the bell pepper. Now, I do have my oven heating as well to 400 degrees, so be sure that you set your oven. But a really nice trick, because we want this really big shape for when we roast our vegetables, and th the big shape is super easy to get. You're just gonna cut along the seams right here of your bell pepper, and I, have, I even have the stem on. I'm just gonna cut straight down those seams, and this is so easy, and I feel silly that I didn't learn this until my adulthood, but. I just cut down the seams and then you can just break it off. So that way there's little, um, you know, having to cut out the stem or the rind and I can just put it on my tray. I'm just simply just breaking these off and they break off so neatly into that perfect shape. This is one of those shapes too you can use for roasting. I've also seen people do like nachos with this shape and fill them up with meat and cheese and lots of other good things in there too. And when I roast my vegetables, I know that if my bell peppers are done roasting, my other vegetables are done roasting too. Now I've got the bell peppers. I have yellow bell peppers, red bell peppers. Now these tomatoes, there's two tomatoes you could use. I like the San Marzano or the Roma tomatoes. That's because they're a little bit tougher. They're a little bit more dense. And so they just hold up really well for roasting. And I think that they have a better flavor and it leaves my chili a little more thicker than watery. And then again, I do have a shallot and an onion on here. I just wanna show you how I cut them. They're still pretty big, only a third or half size. And I left this part on to just hold it together while it's roasting. We'll cut it off later. But I did wanna show you how I'm cutting these. So. With the San Marzano or the Roma tomatoes, you want to cut them from like the belly button down to the bottom, the long ways. And that is so you can keep the juices in. See, not a lot spills out uh, when you cut it that way. The next thing that I'm gonna do is take about a tablespoon of olive oil and we're just gonna drizzle it on the top. Now, it's not gonna drizzle perfectly, that's okay, because we're gonna use our hands and kind of spread it around. Now, you probably could use a spray if you wanted to, but I like being able to use my nice olive oil for this one. Now, I'm just gonna kind of move my vegetables around just like so, getting that oil just kind of spread around. Now, once you get your veggies all ready to go, you're gonna take about a quarter teaspoon of salt and we're just gonna sprinkle it over the top just for a little added flavor. And I wanna show you that I am laying the cut side of the vegetables up. So the tomatoes are laying up this way, the bell peppers up this way, like little boats, laying everything up so it gets nice and roasted. So I'm gonna put this in my oven here. Now I'm gonna set my timer for 30 minutes and I recommend checking it at 30 minutes 
And once the bell peppers are a little bit blackened, a little bit bubbly, then you know everything else is done. So it could take up to 400 minutes, it kind of, or 400 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, it just depends on how thick your bell peppers are and your other vegetables. So. So I kind of just check it periodically after 30 minutes. Now, while these are roasting, we're gonna actually start some of the other components of this recipe. I recommend big game meat for this recipe. So bison, ground venison, our friends caught a moose a couple of weeks ago, so ground moose, um, but something that's a little bit heartier and lean. So let's put this into our nonstick pan here. The other tool I want to show you for this is a meat masher. If you do not have a meat masher, I highly recommend getting one. It is my favorite tool in the kitchen and we're going to use it a couple different times. I will show you what it looks like. Alrighty. Now, once you have your bison in your pan, I like to set mine to like a medium high setting. I don't want it to burn. I don't want it to dry out. So we're going to, we're going to kind of cook this Nice, low and slow. We're going to just break the bison up in this twisting motion like this. This is my meat masher that I was talking about. Again, it's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. We use it for mashed potatoes, ground meat. We're gonna use it again once we put our whole chili together. Now, I'm just gonna break this up and just kind of spread it around just for some easy cooking. Now that our bison's going and sizzling on the stove, you can hear it, I'm gonna drain the beans that I had pressure cooked in my pressure cooker beforehand. These beans are half cup white pinto beans, half cup black beans, five to six cups of water, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's it. If you would like to eat this dish right away, you wanna set your Instant Pot for 25 minutes. If you know that you're gonna make this chili and then let it slow cook for a little while, for a few hours, my kitty cat wants to say hi. Um, if you know you're gonna slow cook the meal for a little bit longer like I'm doing today, only set your Instant Pot for 15 minutes because they will continue to cook while your meal is slow cooking. Now, it is gonna be a little bit hot and we're gonna drain the beans into the strainer that's gonna go into a pot or a bowl. The reason for that is because we will use some of this bean water later because it still is jam packed with flavor. And depending on how much your beans have cooked, we don't wanna waste some of that. And I think it makes for a little bit more of a robust flavor and a thicker chili as well. So I like a thick chili, I don't want a soupy chili. So I'm gonna pour this. Now this strainer is my favorite. I've had it since I was a kid. It is like one of those original Tupperware strainers. I swear you could run over it with a Tesla Cybertruck and it would still withstand and look as good as new. So I'm just gonna, I just drained the beans into this strainer and I'm just pouring them right back. That's all I'm gonna do. That's all I'm gonna do. And we're gonna keep this water, this bean water for a little bit longer. And it's about two cups. We probably will only use a cup of it, but I'm just gonna set the whole pot aside for now. Now the next thing that I'm going to put in my beans, in my Instant Pot, in what I have prepared beforehand is the mixture of the seasoning. This is the secret sauce. This is going to be what I think is the favorite in any dish. You can use this for tacos, chili, soups, anything, carnitas. Um, and so what I recommend doing is actually just making a big jar of it, you know, taking a jar or something like this and just making a big batch of it. What we have in here is we have our chili powder. We have a tablespoon of chili powder and then one teaspoon of chipotle powder. Chipotle could be optional. You do not have to have the chipotle. We like that smoky flavor in this family. Uh, the one teaspoon of cumin, half teaspoon of cinnamon. I know that sounds a little bizarre, but that is what makes this a fall dish. It's gonna smell so wonderful in your home. Very, very aromatic. Salt, you're gonna want one teaspoon of salt. And then the other secret ingredient, like the cinnamon, is one tablespoon of dark brown sugar. Now I'm just gonna pour this in. And the unique thing about chipotle powder and chili powder is that they can actually help with blood flow circulation or anti-inflammatory so why not use as much as we can if your family likes spice i suggest adding a little bit more chili powder or chipotle powder into the instant pot for your dish let's head back over to the bison 
and see how it's browning. And I'm just gonna use my meat masher here and I'm gonna break this up into really tiny bits. We only wanna brown the meat, so you don't need to cook it so it's black or darkened or anything like that. I recommend choosing, like I said, a big game meat, but also one that's really lean because I like to keep all the flavor in there and that includes some of the fat. If you choose a really fatty beef, for example, let's say you do 85% lean uh, versus the 93%, sometimes the fat content can like rest on top of your chili and it can kind of take over the flavor a little bit if you don't drain it beforehand. But I think it's good to get a little bit of that fat in there, but not too much, just enough for a little flavor. And look, it's already almost done. I'm telling you, the meat masher helps cook cook it faster because you can get it in those tiny bits so here we go so that is just about complete and i'm just going to put this on my warmer here on my oven so it just stays warm that bison looks awesome okay so i'm going to turn this off i'm going to put this on my warming element here just to keep it warm the timer went off and i only had had to add three minutes to the roasted vegetables and they're great. They're totally done. So I'm gonna take them out and show you. They look so pretty and I was not lying. If your bell peppers are done, your other ones are done. So let me just get the tongs so you can see. See how the bell peppers are just toasted right on the tops, just curling over just a little bit, just a little bit blackened on the edges and the onions are doing the same thing so we're gonna let these cool these will cool fairly quickly so we're just gonna let leave them there for a moment and just let them cool in the meantime we're gonna add our cooked bison over into our instant pot i have the browned bison over here and i'm just gonna add this to our instant pot now just to review a little bit we have our cooked beans in our instant pot we've drained the water out and we have our seasoning mixture in here as well. That includes the cumin, the ground cinnamon, chipotle and chili powder. And I'm just going to put the bison in here, just right in here. The other thing that we can add to this because the vegetables are gonna cool really quickly and we're gonna add them to this very soon. So I've got all the meat in there, yum. The other thing that we're going to add is you want to add one can of tomato sauce. Now, if you don't have tomato sauce on hand, you can also do those tiny cans of tomato paste, which are about four to six ounces, and then you want to do equal parts water. If you do add a can of tomato sauce, uh, you can use the 14 ounce can of tomato sauce. That's all you need. And we're just going to put this in here. Now I'm just gonna give this one big stir with all of those seasonings in there and the bison and that can of tomato sauce. Tomatoes are really unique too because when tomatoes are harvested at a cannery, they are canned within hours of being harvested. So it's actually a really great flavor. Sometimes a can of tomato sauce has a better flavor than the actual tomato itself because it's so fresh this is all stirred up let's head back over and cut up those vegetables the vegetables have cooled down enough to cut them so i'm going to start dicing them up i just wanted to show you a few things to be aware of before you start dicing remember we left the bottoms of the shallots and the onions on so you want to be sure that you definitely cut those off you don't want to throw those into your chili the tomatoes you actually don't need to cut the tomatoes they're going to be really really soft and we're going to use that meat masher again once we get it into the chili and they're just going to fall right apart so we don't really need to do anything to the tomatoes so all we're going to dice up here is the bell peppers the onions and the shallots the garlic roasted up really, really nicely, but I'm actually gonna use a garlic masher for that. You can definitely use a paring knife and dice them real small. This goes so quickly because the veggies are so soft from roasting. So this part goes really, really fast. Now, my family kind of likes the big chunks in the chili, so I dice them up, but I actually don't go too small, and I definitely don't go for pretty because it's gonna taste the same no matter what. The other thing I wanna point out is when you do store this chili, you can eat it right away, of course, and it can store up to, you know, about three to four days in your refrigerator. 
but this meal is such a great meal to make a double batch of and freeze. You can freeze this for up to six months. I like freezing them in big gallon size bags, or you can freeze it in a container of some sort that you have. But this is such a great one to just take right out of the freezer, thaw it out into a pot or in your microwave and enjoy later. Definitely, if you want to meal prep or save yourself some time, make a double batch. The Instant Pot is actually big enough for a double batch of this recipe if you do wanna do that, so I say go for it. We're gonna combine our vegetables into our Instant Pot now. So remember, we've got our beans, our bison, our seasonings, our can of tomato sauce in our Instant Pot right now. And look at these, so pretty, so many colors. I know they say that chicken soup is good when you're not feeling well or you wanna just boost that immune system, but I don't know, I think this chili may just do the trick. Now, with the garlic, you can easily use a paring knife for these or you can use the garlic masher. I'm gonna use the garlic masher and it's gonna mash very quickly and easily because they're so soft. I'm just gonna do it right into the Instant Pot here. Oh yeah, so, so good. That roasted garlic flavor is really unique. So I really enjoy this. Let's grab our tongs and I want to show you these beautiful roasted tomatoes. They are absolutely gorgeous. And again, you know the vegetables are done because of the bell peppers, but this is what the tomatoes look like. They're just almost a little bit dried right on the top, but the juices are inside. Now, we're just going to use our tongs to put them in pretty much. I mean, they are still half in halves. We're not cutting them or anything. Now, let me grab my meat masher. And we're just going to, we're mashing our bison. We're just mashing those tomatoes a little bit. Again, they're just falling right apart. Okay, and we're going to give this one good stir. It's got all those yummy ingredients in there. Now, remember our bean water, our bean water that we saved? I have a half cup here, and all I'm gonna do is add in a half cup really slowly because I wanna be sure that it's the texture that our family enjoys. That's why I really like this chili recipe is because you can kind of adjust it based off of a lot of the mouths that you need to feed. So if your family likes spice, if your family uh, is vegetarian, you could, instead of doing the ground meat, you could add a half cup of lentils at the beginning with your beans and the recipe stays the same and you have that extra added protein in those lentils. Okay, so I stirred that up. That's only a half cup of the bean water. We're gonna actually add another half cup because it is still pretty thick while all of those juices get in there. The reason I don't leave the bean water in here, and I had to learn this the hard way, is because sometimes the vegetables release so much moisture when it slow cooks that we open it up and it's just too watery. So I really like to add it slowly to just a little bit thicker than I would like to eat it. And that almost every time has come out, and it will today, to one and a half cups of bean water. Could you use regular water or a broth of some kind? 100%. You could definitely use a vegetable broth, but I already have this here, so it's nice and easy. The tomatoes now have fallen apart, and I'm going to show you now what this looks like. So gorgeous. You can see the tomatoes have fallen apart. Now it is a little bit thicker than we would probably um, enjoy it at and eat it at, but that's still only because there will be more moisture once we cook it a little bit longer. So now we've placed our Instant Pot lid back on. If you wanna enjoy this with your family right away, just set your Instant Pot for 10 minutes and it will heat it right up and you can enjoy it right away with your family. If you have a day like we have and it's gonna be a busy one tonight, <laughs> then you can set it to a low, slow cooker setting for three to four hours on low and enjoy it later in the day. We like to uh, combine this with cornbread or on top of rice or even a potato. We like to top it with shredded cheese, cilantro, maybe some queso fresco or a dollop of sour cream. You can also have it on its own. It is flavorful and 
good. So it really doesn't need much. I hope you've really enjoyed this video and have learned some techniques that you can take with you. We've roasted vegetables today. We've cooked some beans in our Instant Pot. We've browned some bison. There's a lot of things that we learned today. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and follow me along this Masters of Integrative Nutrition journey as we explore more recipes together.